Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our European... European? Yes. Tutorial series with, uh... Filthy Robot. It's okay. been like... It's been like two weeks. I don't know how to speak. I've lost <laughs> the ability to, like, play games. How's it been? How's it been going I'm, for you? I've been doing well, man. I'm, uh, glad to get back to our regular scheduled sessions. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to go without after having had them for... What? Two months now that we've been doing this? For an episode, like, 120-something? I don't know. I can't remember. When did we start this? Wait, when that um, month? I can tell you. Possibly. No, I can't. I deleted the older ones. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Couple so, months now, uh, at least. So, it's, uh, today's, uh, what? January the 16th. We both just got back after, like, holidays. I just had a vacation. And, uh, we're, we're sitting down, right? And we're evaluating the series and, and talking about what we've accomplished and what we still yet want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we are gonna wrap it up sometime soon. Not, not just, like, today or anything or tomorrow, but, uh, soon. There's a few more topics we want to cover in this tutorial-esque series. And then after that, we've got some other plans uh, that we're going to continue to do uh, collaboration style. So, um, do you want to talk about those? Or do we want to kind of let them come up organically? What do you want to do? Uh, you, can, you can float them. I mean, you feel like you've now insured them. You might as well float them out. Okay. Uh, main, main topics we want to hit. We want to talk about vassals more. You've been asking about that. Um, I want to also bring up personal unions and how they differ from vassals. Colonial nations is going to happen very soon automatically just because you finally did take colonial ideas. Thank you. Um, you even asked me specifics about uh, the different types of cast disability that are out there and when and why you would use them. And then also you had questions about the HRE. So those are the five main topics yet to be discussed in this campaign. I've There's got a, a quick one-off topic to bounce by you too. Yeah. Uh, I was asked in my comments to ask you about the origins of comets in, uh, in this series. <laughs> okay. So there's a, I mean, I, it is kind of a historical funny thing with Paradox and their development of this game. There was a random event that you could get. Uh, it's like a five-year pulse or a one-year pulse event that would just cause you to lose one stability. And uh, when the game first came out, you could only ever have three event decisions. So there would only be like three listed. Eventually, they added it so that you could have more, which is really good for modders. But every patch, they would add another line, like another option that you could choose for uh, the stability hit. You, you still lose stability every time, always. Yep. <laughs> but there's, yeah, like, there's like six different choices you can take. And the, uh, the one that you're referring to is uh, Common Sense, the, the DLC Common Sense. Uh, there's like a, one of the decisions is I guess they didn't have enough Common Sense or Comet Sense. And uh, ah. that's what that's in reference to. I see. I see. So, so yeah, uh, there are a few other topics that we could cover in a tutorial-esque series, but uh, we are, alas, a, uh, a Catholic nation. So we can't really talk about religion, for example. Can't like go talk about the Hindus because we're not Hindus, that kind of thing. Got a peace offer from England. Um, like so uh, you you cliffhangered the the end of this peace deal <laughs> with England. It was you. I, I would never do something like uh -huh, this. Uh -huh. I would I would never. So what's it going to be? What are we doing here? I, I assume full annexation. Had you swallow your lies in a few weeks now, so I guess I'll I'll, take, I'll choke this one down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so there's really not very many options here. Uh, we could we could force them to revoke course, just so that we could. You know what we could. Do? <laughs> you know what we could do. What's that? You wanted a vassal, right? No, you want the one tile. <laughs> you want to you want to vassalize England? Uh, that's the quickest way to do it, I suppose. But I actually think the I think the benefits of vassals were you know more along the lines of I, I experimented a little bit in a different campaign with vassals now at this point not a ton but a little bit and and I was getting direct feedback as I was doing that and some of the advantages of vassals seem to be things like going to war on your vassal's CBs feeding them land letting them pay the coring costs and then you annex the whole the whole thing later uh, yep yep so I don't think England's gonna have a lot of I mean I guess we're we gonna fight Burgundy or who's Burgundy allied with right now is he allied with French can't remember in this game He's in a coalition know. against us. He's allied. His allies don't matter as much as the coalition matters. We've got a pretty massive coalition against us, if, if you recall. And it's still in place right now. Yeah. They'll probably so attack I us guess my since point we reloaded. Are we going to be able to do anything with England as a vassal? Probably not, not at all. No, not at yeah. all. It's just funny because we were no, Scotland. Let's, and let's get, England off the, let's get England off the map. I don't think the Scottish would vassalize the English, given a choice. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Go ahead and uh, do, do what you want to do with them then. I'm going to unpause and we'll just let the game run for a bit. All right. Uh, probably don't want to become Defender of the Faith. We have the two little crap states that we don't want to turn into because they're not worth it. It's only a little bit of development. We do have state slots, but it's a it's a bad, bad investment long term. I think. Spain had apparently guaranteed the papal state. Uh, I guess in this episode, how about we talk about the HRE a bit then, since we're just kind of 
waiting, waiting or looking around and stuff. So uh, you talk, we talk about uh, returning cores. I don't think I've done that very much. So uh, returning cores in this case uh, is going to what? What does it do? So show me a show me a, a let's take a look at a province with a core and a province without a core on it. You talking about the actual button to return province or to return what? What now? now? Uh, so in a piece deal, I just took from England. I made mm. them revoke cores. Okay. So uh, show me. So let's look at some that have like cause not going to have a revoke core on it because we just took it. So versus let's take one that does now have one so what's the difference so i'm still okay. seeing english claims and all these are great british british claims now okay okay so you can't make someone revoke a core on a province that they currently own it's got to be a province that they have a core on that they don't own and what it does is it just makes them abandon the core mm -hmm. so they can't say in the future that hey this land belongs to us and we have a right to it mm -hmm. you're essentially solidifying your your conquest of that land um and the base, the base uh, territories that a country has a core, a core on, are just defined when you start the game, or they're based on other things. I know, like as you, the, the time seems to have some impact on this, right? Like they'll lose their claims on an area after a certain point. But I, I think I'm confusing cores and claims. Okay. Yeah, claims is the thing that you use for the conquest cast of spell. A core yep. is a more permanent thing that just says this land is a core part of our nation. Hence the term core. Um, in a, in a single-player game against AI, 99 times out of 100, making an AI abandon cores will do nothing to help you, personally, because... Well, the way most players play, if if you are losing wars against the AI, the campaign is practically over, um, because you shouldn't usually be in that position. Um, so you, you would like to think, okay, I can I can make my rival make abandon the cores on my land, and that'll help me, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're playing properly, they're never going to be able to win a war against you anyway, and so them having core on your land does nothing. Does it not encourage them to attack that? So if you make them give up core on your land, do they no longer... I mean, like, let's say that you have hostile relations with them, but you're trying to be like, you know, I've taken enough of their land, I don't want to expand that way anymore, I don't really need it anymore of their land, but I want them to stop focusing negatively on me. Does revoking... Does making them remove cores from land you previously taken, like, reduce their desire to attack you? Or no? It could, but if they're your rival, they're still gonna hate you. They're still gonna wanna. They're still gonna want your land. Um, one thing we could do, if you really wanted a vassal, is we could release Normandy. He doesn't have any cores, and also I'm not a big fan of releasing this particular vassal because uh, he would be a competitor for us in the English Channel trade node. I, I assume you want to talk about trade again for another 20 minutes at some point soon. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to, but. <laughs> I, I, I was watching some like I, I'm actually like three quarters of the way through a trade video like describing things about trade that was somewhat helpful somewhat not I mean honestly all I've found so far is that most of the times the best way to get any any sense of what I want to do with it is to experiment like move my fucking ships around a couple different nodes and things like that so uh, would you like local unrest plus five seems like a lot especially when we have like 2,000 separatists spawning it's a single, you like single province though of, isn't it uh, oh, it is, does say London. It does say London, I guess. Oh, London. Okay. London is our capital. London has negative five unrest already, so it doesn't okay. really matter. Or we could gain a noble of the third family, four three, th four, three, four, with average claim becomes heir, and we lose 10 legitimacy. Do we have an heir right now? We don't. I'm just about to look. Nope. Our guy's 59, too. Feels four, like three, four. Might be good. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I like a four, three, four. Okay. Right. Oh, it's a woman. Yeah, does that matter? No, not, not too much. Um, for us, almost not at all, but certain nations have, uh, like the Iberian wedding with Castile and Aragon is based on genders of the rulers. Mm. One of them has to be man, one of them has to be woman in order for that event to fire. Mm. Uh, I lowered maintenance a little bit just because uh, we're sort of sitting around. Uh, we're not at war anymore, so I'm going to grab the heavies out of the fleet. Grab the transports uh, out of the fleet. Let's oh. fossilize uh, Brittany. How do you feel about that? They're not in any coalitions that I see. They're allies with Burgundy, Picardy, and the Papal State, but they're not allies with France. Okay. How do you feel about that? It's good. It's a, it's a real spit in the face for France. You're definitely leaning towards not being French allies anymore. You well, do if that. We, if we colonize, if we vassalize Burgundy, and then we could use Burgundy to take some French lands, how would that feel? Do they have cores anymore? I guess I can check on them. They don't have any cores or claims on France because they are uh, scared, basically, of France. They mm. they can't possibly take France. 
How about Portugal? Portugal, are they friendly with Spain? Yeah, they are. Wait, wait. It feels oh, like that's they're... right. We took land from Spain. I totally forgot about that. We have yeah. a little little bit down in Galicia yeah. to give us our edge on Portugal. I like this. How much war score costs is Portugal? How much war score cost is it? Is they... this just on provinces that tell me? Yeah, you click on the province, and then you see that little number in the center of the province dialog. It tells you the war score cost for one specific province. Hover over the number, and it'll tell you the total war score cost for all Portuguese provinces. No, I don't see that. Where is this uh, number? It's slightly to the right of the military section on the, port on the uh, province tab. Province page. There's like a mm, crossed uh, swords with a star. Swords I see crossed swords. Oh, in the center. Province yeah. war. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hover over anything, like that whole icon. It'll say at the very bottom of the tooltip, the total war score cost for all Portuguese provinces is 178%. So if you were to go to war with Portugal, with, say, the Conquest Casaspelli, which has 100% cost modifier for provinces, then uh, you couldn't full annex him, because you can only ever do a war score peace deal of 100%, and it would take 178% to full annex him. Got it. If you had a piece, like a, a Casaspelli, that reduced the cost to, say, 75%, then you could take more, but still not enough. And what I was specifically looking for here is, is the number less than 100? If so, we could just go straight outright vassalize him. You, mm. vassalization can at most cost 100% war score. And uh, yeah. so he's too big to vassalize in one war. So yeah. we would have to attack him, take some of his land, then attack him again, and then, then we could vassalize him. Or we would have to see if in any of his land, he has an existing nation that could be released, which we do actually have. We could release Galicia right now. That would that would remove our ability to get claims. And Galicia has. Where are you seeing that you can release uh, that from? Okay, so, so if I click on Galicia, go. look at the cores and claims. Where I don't actually have to see Galicia. Oh, that's the one we have in Spain. Yeah. Okay. So we're coring it right now. You can see that Spain has a core on it. They consider it to be one of their core provinces. Yep. And then there's another nation, Galicia. Mm -hmm. They're slightly grayed out because the nation, the tag itself, doesn't exist. It's hard yep. to tell that it's grayed out, but that's a grayed out flag. Yeah. If it were a nation that existed, it would have some color to it. So, Galicia considers this to be one of their core provinces. The country may be created from this province or appear as a new country if a revolt grows strong enough. So, there is no map mode, unfortunately, to see a non-existent nation's cores. Like, to see how big they would be. What you have to do is just click around. So, you click on Galicia, you see, okay, Galicia's got core on Galicia. Great. Does Galicia have core on Porto? No. Braganza? No. Uh, Leon, no. So they have no cores. There's no cores adjacent that we could, like, release the vassal and then immediately attack using their Casas Belli. Okay. Um, looking at Spain... Although we could attack Leon, and then Leon has claims around it. We would have to conquer in another war against Spain, and then release Leon. You can't release Leon from Galicia, because Leon doesn't have a core in Galicia. You can only right. release a nation no, if no, they I have understand. core. We'd have, to, we'd have to conquer Leon, and then yeah. release. Yeah. Yeah, so here's the, here's the idea. If we want a vassal, which we do, the one in Spain is, is a, a better location, I think, than the Normandy vassal because he's not going to compete for trade with us in our capital node. Yeah. Um, if we release him, we won't have land in that area, so we can't fabricate claims anymore. But he will be a real nation. He will have a ruler, he will have monarch points, he will have diplomats. If we say that we really want the Iberian Peninsula, he should fabricate claims as well. Right. So I, I'm Let's leaning... Toward releasing uh, Galicia, we'll, we'll we'll lose some um, some admin points since we did allow that core to get up to fourteen point seven percent, but we'll we'll get half of it back. Okay. I don't really care about that. I want to I want to get a vassal for you. But yeah, this is the tutorial. So. This is uh this has never happened to us. We're actually going to go over the relationship limit, which is not that great because we are going I for. I only a... just learned about the relationship limit yesterday. <laughs> not even joking. We've talked about it two or three times, filthy. Yeah, I'm sure we have, but I never <laughs> I never actually knew what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, okay. okay, what happens... Oh, that's, this, this brings follow-up questions. There they are. are in, uh, what happens if... When it says I am having a costly embargo, what is it costing me? 5% trade efficiency penalty. Okay. And when I have too many relationships, what is it costing me? One diplomatic point per month. Okay. It'll tell you that if you hover over your diplomatic power point generation. You see okay. a list. you got monthly increase, base value, the skill of your ruler, national focus... Uh, the diplomat that you have hired, um, then diplomatic relationship slots, and then finally the Importation Act is a policy we have on. And then if we were, and this is will happen right now. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. Um, right click on our nation, so you're looking at the diplomacy screen for our country. Okay. The very, very bottom of the 
uh, the list of nations, all their opinions. There's a, there's a button down there called Create a Subject, either a vassal or a protectorate from some yep. of your provinces. So click on that, shortcut key is Z. The very bottom of this list, it is sorted based on last attained province. So the very bottom, you're going to see Normandy, because that's the last province we obtained from England. And yep. above that, we got Ulster, Ladari, Sligo, Desmond, Holston. Wait, wait. Didn't you just say this was in order the, the, when we recently obtained them? Yeah, it should be. I don't know why Galicia is up there. Um, if we continue to play, it's probably because we reloaded the game. But like, if we had been playing in a continuous session, Galicia would be toward the bottom. Okay. Anyway, Galicia is... Uh, yeah, like the, it's near the top, yeah. Okay. Relevant information here, it's going to say Galicia will be released with the following provinces, Galicia. Okay. This is a real risk. Like, let's say we had taken England and uh, we were going to release Norm... We were going to release Call and we wanted England to be down there. When you release a nation, they get every single province that they have core on. You do not get to choose. So, that would mean that they would take over half of our country. If Let's we had see. done England. Glycia only has core on Glycia, so that's all that they're going to get. If you want to, there's a button you can click called Play as Release Subject. Do not click that in multiplayer because really weird things happen. Okay. Uh, especially if you're playing the same nation. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then beyond that, it's always very, very important at the very top of the screen. It says Diplomacy, and then below that, Create Vassal. There are two types of things that can happen when you use this page. Number one, you create a vassal. Number two, you create a protectorate. A protectorate is different than a vassal, and it's... I've never even heard of a protectorate. It's really, really bad. I mean, I have really in, like, the sense of the real world, but I've never heard of it in this game. What is a protectorate? Okay, a protectorate is different than a vassal in that, number one, they don't automatically join your wars. Number two, they don't pay you taxes. Number three, you can't integrate them. Number four, um, you take Sounds a stab hit to cancel it. So yeah, they're bad. Um, but here's what they do give you. They give you 50% of their trade power, which regular vassals don't. And um, whether they are a, a protectorate or not is dependent upon their tech level. So uh, let's say, for example, we were releasing a single one province down in Africa. In fact, we could why don't we actually go look at this? We did take Beifta from Spain as well. But then no, no nations have core down there. So we can't release that as a protectorate. But because... Biefthada, or whatever it's called, is down in South America, South Africa. Um, actually, it's kind of mid mid Africa, Western Africa. Let's call it that. Because it's in a different area of the world, and it's not likely to have the same institution spread as what we have, it would be behind us by more than fifty percent tech penalty. So when you release it, it would be a protectorate rather than a vassal. Basically, rule of thumb: protectorates are shit. Don't get them. Go for vassals. If you have to okay. release them as a protectorate, wait until you can spread the tech. By owning the land yourself, you will rapidly spread the institutions there, wait for it to spread, and then release it as a vassal. Okay. There are certain situations where protectorates are useful. For example, if you wanted to, like, offer protectorate status to Mali or something, then that, that could be good. In fact, when you right-click on, say, Jolof, there is a button in the Influence Action section, <coughs> Establish Protectorate. Uh, what was the name of the province? Uh, it's right above Biafeta. There's two nations down there, Mali and J Jolof. Okay, I see the, Jolof now. Yeah, in the influence actions subsection of the di diplomacy screen, you've got enforce peace, offer vassalization, establish protectorate. They're too technologically, too technologically advanced right now, but in the beginning of the game, they're not. So like if you're playing as Portugal or Spain or something, sometimes you can just peacefully protectorate people, which is good. They don't cost a relationship slot and they give you half their trade power. Nice, it's good for trade. But as far as conquest goes, protectorates are really bad. So just always, the, my point, why we went on this little aside, is always make sure, check it, read, is it saying create vassal or create protectorate? Because I've made the mistake before where I assume I'm releasing a vassal only to find out that it's a protectorate and get really pissed. Okay. So in this case, it is a it's a vassal, go ahead and release it. Uh, I, got, I moved out of that, but I got it right now. Okay, create vassal, send. Okay. okay. I'm going to go ahead and offer a royal marriage to Bohemia since we're older. Okay. So just wait a second before you click off their their request. Okay, and now you see in a new alert, you have too many diplomatic relations. Hovering over yeah. that says, currently costs you one diplo point per month. And when you hover over the diplomatic power point generation, you can see five out of four diplomatic relations minus one. So it's bad because we're doing a diplomatic idea group right now, but we also have a huge coalition against us and I don't really particularly want to get rid of any of our allies. So it's up to you. We could we could get rid of one or, or we could just waste the point. Uh, a lot of players would say... What are the costs of breaking a royal marriage or breaking an alliance? Uh, breaking a royal marriage will cost you one stability. 
Okay. Um, breaking an alliance costs you nothing but opinion unless you are allies in a current war. If you are allies okay. in a current war, it's a heinous act and it costs you like one or two stab. Okay. Um, if you have full diplomatic ideas, the idea group, then there's no stab hit for breaking a royal marriage ever. And there's no stab hit for revoking march status, which is another thing we could talk about. We've just barely started to maybe kind of talk about vassals, and now I'm already bringing up protectorates and marches, but... I, mean, so, march. I, I was thinking, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, not we'll, do, quite we'll do both. We'll do both. We'll, we'll start off by talking about vassals in the next episode, and then after that, we'll probably, for the sake of covering more things, turn Galicia into a march. And we'll talk about what the differences are uh, soon. Okay. See you guys so, soon. All right, we'll see you in a bit.